it's Jacob and welcome back to my third episode of the Hermit's Craft 8 recap series. Today I'm going to show you what my favourite hermits have done during week 4 and 5 on the server. I am starting off with B-dubs. His main challenge of episode 5 was to get a 15 slot llamas for his rent -a llama business. We've done it! We did it! We did it baby! Oh my goodness! <laughs> 15 slots here in this llama. How do I get off? Okay, right, now off. Uh, good guys, I've been breeding for two days. And then I just went out to dinner with my lovely, beautiful, beautiful wife. And I came home and the first llama I tamed, this guy 15 or ow, 15. We're back in business, baby. Once he had bred a full 10, 15 slot llama caravan, he began clearing out a spruce forest at the back of his shop where he plans to build a mega mountain. We're gonna cover this in a mountain, a monstrosity of a mountain. I didn't think it was gonna be that big, but now that I'm laying out the area, it's gonna start over there. Yes, and it's gonna go up and down, and it lands, it comes back down past Tango's base over there. But anyway, just lots and lots of tree chopping for us. Lots, lots, it's gonna take, I don't know, what's your guess? Take a guess how many hours this would take. I'm gonna say zero hours, thanks to my trusty time machine bed. And, wonderful, perfect job, all cleared out. And he did it, he finished his mountain in one episode. I couldn't help myself, I just had, I had to go, I had to do this, and we finished it. We finished the mountain, this huge monstrosity. Building the mountain took all of his resources, so he decided to build his own stone and cobblestone generator. Well, I've never seen this. You just revolutionized Minecraft. I did? Yes, you did. <laughs> I've been trying for 10 years, Tango. You done it. You done did it. Be oh, honest. that's what I'm talking I'm about. I'm so proud of you. No, no, for real. This is actually pretty good. This is pretty good stuff. I like oh, it. In episode 6, he not only showed off his mountain, revolutionized Minecraft, but also finally signed up for the No Wings Club. Now for those of you that don't know, there is a club that Iskal has made, and hey it is the No Wings Club. Funny enough, it's floating up here and really hard to access without wings. Now, what you do is you don't wear wings. This really fits kind of our theme with the, uh, it, it, coincidentally, that we've, we've kind of saying, hey, let's stay on the roads and the paths and stuff like that. And funnily enough, he also signed up for the Yes Wings Club that was created by Impulse and Wells Knight. According to the rules, this club was created for hermits who love to fly, although it doesn't say you have to use your wings. You have to talk about the flight club and you get a welcome gift. A shulker box full of rockets, an elytra and an aviator helmet. B-dubs July 22nd. There we have it. So, w uh, welcome to the club. Look at this, we get a free shulker for signing up and we get this. This helmet and a free set of wings and all these rockets? Amazing, hold on. Holy smokes! I look gorgeous and this is an aviator helmet on my head as well. <laughs> I love this! In episode six, Tango met up with a big eyed crew at one of their gas stations. They changed the shop's name to Big Eyes Gas and Pass and officially opened for business. B-dubs noticed something changed about him and started questioning him. But me, yeah. it was just like, you know, it just, it didn't, it didn't work. Okay, like, well, hey, on. it's what fine. Happened? You, you're off on your own and now we split mm -hmm. it 50-50. No, 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 listen. It's going to be listen, better for our I, problem. I thought you might say this, so I took, I took precautionary measures, all right? Oh, you did? I did, I did, actually, yeah, see? Show us. Okay. Oh! Everything's <laughs> taken care of! Guys, you guys are friends. Yes. You guys are friends. There's one. Oh, we can. Uh huh. We can have two. Uh huh. There's another one. <laughs> <laughs> now we can all be. 
<laughs> Slap okay. on. Mm-hmm. Hey. Hey. <laughs> it's official. Oh, these are amazing. <laughs> now, every time we got official big eye business, oh, we got we got uniforms now. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. This is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Soon after that, they started on a derpy commercial promoting their shops. And three, two, one, action. Sell me. Bum ba dum bum. You got gas coming and big eyes and piling ass. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, no, that was bad. Don't, that was bad. don't do. Let's, yeah, let's don't. Cut. Cut. Okay, Take half of that right was just cut. making sounds with your mouth, saying <laughs> boopity pop, boopity pop. Don't, don't do that. Don't more, more. That. Sell me, sell me. Okay. Make me really want to okay. stop him. Okay, and three, two, one, action. Hey, Corrales. I'm tired, Corrales. After a long day on the road. I mm-hmm. could use to pass on in, perhaps, and get some gas as well. What do you say, friend? Come on in to Big Eyes Passing Gas. In episode seven, Tango built his insane custom mine farm. He started by building a platform close to his copper farm and explained some of the mechanics and details of the design. So this is one of our villager modules here. The first one we're going to do and prototype it out here, make sure everything works here. So the idea now is that the reason we're going to lift the villagers up in the air is because when a a villager or a, a pack of three villagers, I should say, spawn a golem, they're marked as having seen a golem and you can't a, a villager can't spawn another golem for 30 seconds after seeing a golem and whenever they spawn a golem it's every villager within 10 blocks in any direction is also flagged as having seen a golem so what we need to do here is lift them up into the sky and oh, you can see mom's falling over there <laughs> lift them up into the sky there they spawn the golem up there and there's no villagers within 10 blocks in any direction so only those three villagers that are in the tube get marked as seeing a golem and they'll fall down. The ones down here haven't seen a golem because they weren't in range. So then this guy will be lifted up. That's why we're playing this vertical distance here. Basically lifting the villagers up, pushing them out of range so that they can spawn a golem and not mark all of their peers as having also seen a golem. By the end of his episode, the farm was ready with a few minor bugs that he promised to resolve between episodes. Okay, you know what? I am happy. I am happy that this is working, but we are not anywhere near close to done with this farm. We are going to be tweaking this. We are going to be playing with it. I may completely change the entire timing system down below. Who knows? I'm pretty sure I'll be live streaming and tweaking and testing and everything. So check me out on Twitch if you want to see that. And we'll see. We'll just see. I don't know. I mean, it's working. This is going to produce a ton of iron as it is. But it's not where I want it to be. We uh, we have improvements that will be made for sure. After successfully finishing his blaze farm, Mumba explained the purpose of his mega farms. Ghast farm drops combined with Enderman and blaze farm drops let him create end crystals. He is now able to kill mobs and players without affecting his statistics. It's all about peace, love and plant bombs now. (laughs) <laughs> oh my goodness. You see, remember when mobs were voluntarily walking into my flames to kill themselves? Well, unfortunately, that just wasn't a particularly fast way for things to kill themselves around me. Which is why I wanted to get some of these things. So now I can very quickly have mobs voluntarily walk into end crystal explosions. I mean, look at this guy. God, he's gotten away with it. Is it because he's short? He got away with it because he's short. I guess I have to go a little bit lower in the ground. Oh, oh, that is successful. Oh, that is, that is something. I mean, can you believe it? Here's me just testing out doing some exploding of end crystals and all these things just keep walking into my explosions. That squid is genuinely killing himself for me though. In episode seven, Mumble built his shop that he called Harmless Harvests. Well, I'm genuinely really pleased with this place. I think it sells useful stuff and this might just be my first successful business in many years on the Hermitcraft server. Forget oh dear, this one's gonna be an oh yeah. After his shop was all stocked up, he revealed his plans for his mega base. Anyway, my plan for my base in this Hermitcraft season is to really lean into the idea of a utopia. I want to create a utopia. I want to create the perfect place. There's going to be nature everywhere, there's going to be animals, there's going to be no harm, no death. Okay, it's just it's going to be a beautiful place to live. And the location that I've earmarked is this area here, this rather enormous place. 
after having problems with Pearl's door, he challenged her for an end crystal duel. I am Hello? I am angry. Okay, I am I am I am really I'm you, I'm angry. Just stop doing that. I, I'm, why? I'm why? trying I'm Why are you angry? Take it take just, a guess. Just open, just... We're gonna have to settle this, alright? We're gonna have to settle uh -huh. this the old fashioned way. How? We are going the to old... have a, a, a standoff. A true old fashioned standoff. So just with bows, right? If that's old not with not with bows. bows, not with bows and crystals. End crystal standoff. Is this the first time you've this done is the this? First time. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> In episode eight, after gathering lots of resources, Mumbo began work on his mega base by marking out the land and creating a framework. I mean, it will be epic. Like this, this would be mega with a capital M, E, G, and A. Even the exclamation mark that follows it would be capitalized. Finally, Green revealed his plans with the Dragon Egg. He created a new tag game that he called Teg. I've decided to do another game of tag, except this time it is done very differently and it's involving the egg. So this one is going to be called Teg. He built a big egg where hermits can sign up for the game and read all the rules. The first hermit that keeps the egg for 500 days wins. The Teg Dragon Egg is here. I just need to start putting some signs together to get people to sign up. Okay, that took me like 10 minutes just to write these signs. It's, it's actually a reasonably complex game. So let's pop my diamond block there and here it is. So welcome to Teg. In episode five, Green finished decorating his base interior and the Teg game officially started. Green hid his egg for the first time. The dragon egg. You thought you might have spotted it there and there, but those are just baits of obsidian. Now, the thing is, I'm going to keep it fairly simple for the very first tag. Now, remember, I don't know how creative all the hermits are going to get, but I really hope that they can get creative. So, I'm going to keep mine very, very simple, and I'm just going to pop it there. Grian organized his trading hall and then showed an exploit in villager trading by turning two pumpkins into a full emerald beacon. I now have two emeralds. I then go to one of these and I get eight glass. I then go to the crafting table and turn these into glass panes. And then I go to the cartographer and he will sell me one glass pane for one emerald. I now have 16 emeralds and I think you can see where I'm going with this. I trade up for more and more glass turn this into more and more glass panes and trade for more and more emeralds all from two pumpkins he then signed a peace treaty with mumbo ending the tree war and this is the peace treaty i've already done my signature peace, peace treaty oh <laughs> it's just a bunch of squiggles i need to get myself a fancy squiggle like this i'm excited in episode 7, Grian started working on his main base. He outlined the shape of a cave entrance and excavated a big chunk of the mountain. Alright, so I have excavated a whole bunch of stuff here, as you can see, and I have actually started marking out all of this water to be taken away. Grian started episode 8 by laying down rails for his new train shop that he called the G-Train. Then he did a small update on the Teg game and looked for the egg and Impulse's base. So what I want to do today is to make some progress on the G-Train. What I also want to do is find ourselves the Teg. So a little bit of an update on where it is. In fact, I think this is already out of date. So Cub is firmly in the lead with 351 points. It then went to False, Scar, Etho gem and then me and then Iskal has lost it and it's gone to impulse. Once he hid the egg in his base, he continued working on his G train. He built and stocked up two big carriages. We are 
finished. We are finished. We've got two full carriages and kind of like a, a storage one over here for shulker boxes. So this is what I have to sell. Most of the stuff has come from villager trading and then all of the books. What I've done here is I've obviously got a carriage that looks like a Minecraft bookshelf. But Impulse, we're not, we're not going <laughs> to... No, no, no. Gonna do, do not remove it. it. We're no, we're not do removing not... it. That's it. Okay, Job's good. done. Oh, Job's you're done. just going to leave it in my bedroom. Oh. Yeah. Until the end of the episode, he was playing around with Mumbo and his end crystals. They killed each other several times. Green also killed Impulse, who had over 500 levels. See, you know, I had nothing to do with this. The he had everything to do with this. It's because made all of the end crystals. I'm, just because I sell the end crystals doesn't mean I'm responsible <laughs> for what people do with them. I, I had no idea this was going to happen. He the gave me the idea. Yeah, but the reason I'm here is because. Grian tried to blow me up with end crystals and failed, and then I blew him up, and now, oh, now I here say. I am. In his seventh episode, Impulse built a piglin bartering farm on top of a nether roof next to his gold farm. Well, look at all those goodies. <laughs> They're just tossing them up in the air and then slid across the sorting system until they make their way to where they belong. And perfect. Look at that. Oh, this is so good. We've got tons of gold being distributed to these piglins now. And as fast as possible, we are getting all this stuff. He later met up with Wells Knight to discuss opening a new club. Right, for people that want to actually fly. Yes, the No No Wings Club. The, I remember the, the No No Wings Club. The double negative <laughs> makes a positive. You know what? Just to make things simple, why don't we just call it the Yes Wings Club? Wouldn't that be a little easier? Impulse opened a new balloon shop that sells golden blackstone. If you want to get up to it, you you got to have wings. <laughs> So, you know, people in the No Wings Club, they they might be tempted to actually fly up to this if they need gold or blackstone. After stocking up his new shop, he went to Iskal's tech base where he searched for the dragon egg. Iskal left plenty of clues to help obtain the egg, but at the end, Impulse brute forced most of the puzzles. Uh, yes, I brute forced it. I'm sorry. We could have stared at it long enough. You guys probably all saw the pattern and I just instead decided to just click buttons like crazy. <laughs> I get it now. GG on that one got me. I was too impatient to stop and figure it out. Same thing with this. I mean, I missed half the sides because I didn't know there was another level to this place. So well done, Iskal. Well done. That was super cool. And now I have 24 hours to figure out what I'm going to do with this. Later, he met up with Wells at the Yes Wings Club and he agreed of building a Wither Rose farm to get black dye for their build. I can get us a Wither Rose farm going so you can finish the concrete and then we'll come back together. And, and, and when we come back together to build this thing, I got something really cool to show you. I'm excited about it. Oh, I can't wait. That okay. sounds awesome. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll get this done next episode and I will get right on that Wither Rose farm ASAP. As he promised, at the beginning of episode 9, Impulse built a chicken-powered Wither Rose farm. Let's make sure it's still working, he hasn't blown anything up, and he's still shooting at the chicken. Perfect. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, yeah. All right, this is working great. Let's see how many more. Ooh, another one. Okay, I gotta get more. Excuse me, Enderman. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to get more. Oh my gosh, it's completely full. Yep, it's completely full. We filled up the entire system. I didn't even bring shulker boxes. I wonder if uh, I wonder if there's any shulkers at that nearby city. After collecting several shulker boxes of wither roses, Impulse met up with Wells to build their YWC base. So what do you think, my friend? I think this turned out fantastic, dude. Oh man, that was fun. That was fun building it up together, man. Just like other hermits, Impulse decided to start planning his mega base. He outlined the area and chose the color palette. It's time to change that. I'm no longer going to have the smallest base in Bodum because I'm going to make the biggest mega base ever. Oh, look at all this. I, I've kind of went around and figured out where I want to have, you know, my land. And there wasn't much left, to be honest, right? Like if we look at the, at, at the Bodum area, 
There's a lot of stuff happening all around the outskirts here. And this is all I really had left. Scar built a honey farm under his shop that he called Bee Cirque. In our last episode, of course, we built this amazing wagon part of our tycoon caravan. And this, of course, is our very first shop. And this will house our waxing service and, of course, all of our bee products that we are going to sell. Now, the shop's name is going to be called Bee Zerk. And I think that's absolutely perfect considering what we've done here with the bees. And, oh, yeah, we've gone a little berserk with the bees for sure. He spent some time at Green's base looking for the hidden dragon egg. Oh man, this could this could be it. I was just about to leave. <laughs> I was such about to leave. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, oh, we did it. Oh, it is. It's a secret room. Oh, we've got it. Where? Okay. Uh, where is it? Um, oh no. This is just the secret jelly. It's just the secret room. Oh, there it is. Yes, we got it. <laughs> Thank you for watching my third episode. It's late and I have to finish now and upload my video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. 